Hello, hello, my nasties. Welcome to another color and chat. This is clearly going to be a color and chat in the lovely Ms. Rococo Agogo. We are going to get into the frilly fabulousness today. Uh, I wanted to be sure to squeeze in at least one more color and chat before I release my new book in July. By the time this color and chat is out, we may already be in July. So, in any event, this color and chat will be released before my new book is out. Poor Rococo Agogo just wasn't getting much love from me. All of you guys love it. You guys have been coloring it and it just loving it. Wonderful, everything peachy, but me. I've just been focusing on other brands and things, so I haven't had any time to... Well, I've had time to color. I've just chosen to use that time to work on other artwork. So anyway, we're here, and we are going to keep it fairly minimal today. After I finished, if you did not watch the first color and chat video, I did this page, which was very minimal, just nothing in the background, just a standalone, cute little 1980s Rococo looking confection. Loved it. I love this look. So I think we're gonna do the same thing here, or at least something similar, because as I was saying, I was avoiding this book, I was avoiding a color and chat, because sometimes my color and chats can get pretty involved. Um, not anything too detailed and such, but I layer and I do this and I do that and I blah, 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 blah. And it takes me several days to film a color and chat, and this time I thought, okay, wait. This flew by because of the simplicity, and I love the simplicity of it. So let's do the same thing here. I have other projects to be working on, but I have no excuse to not create something minimal and cute. So let's just do something minimal and cute. You guys know I don't like excuses around here. I, even I give myself excuses sometimes and that's, no, I don't accept my own excuses either. I beat myself up over them constantly. Okay, so the markers I'm going to be using, I'm gonna be starting with three colors. Um, two shades of purple and a pink. One of them is a cooler, well they're both warm purples, but one of them is a little bit warmer than the other. And then we're doing kind of a bright pink. These markers will not be linked down below. And my reason for that is because if you are new to my channel, uh, I did receive these markers in PR. And I graciously accepted the PR. It was, uh, they sent me markers, and I never encourage that people do this. Uh, but because I'm in a position where I could do it, I just, all they asked for was not for a video, not for anything. They just said, hey, could you color an illustration with our markers and post it on social? I said, sure. And I did. However, the quality of the markers is subpar. They're alcohol markers, so they're not terrible, but the, the actual markers themselves are not terrible, the pigments, but the marker barrel and the fact that some of the markers were uh the ink was leaking and it's just no 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 this is one of those instances where i would recommend not going with the most with the least expensive brand of alcohol marker out there so the ones that i'm going to list are affordable but they're not the least expensive okay these are they're a private label by a brand umbrella called Chalky Crown, and I do have the, oh, excuse me, okay, okay, uh, if I didn't edit out the barking, I'm sorry, but I, there's going to be a weird cut here because the poochies were barking, and so as I was saying, these markers are not the best quality, and as you can tell, they're already beginning to crap out on me. Now, the thing about alcohol markers is that they can easily be revived because just because the the marker is drying out does not mean that the pigment is gone what it means is simply that the pigment vehicle has dried out meaning the alcohol so all you need to do is either with a syringe or an eyedropper or whatever you can either pull out the tip and drip more alcohol in there and let it sit for a couple of hours and then proceed coloring or you can, well that would be my recommendation. You can, what I've done in a pinch too is I've sprayed alcohol on it, but the best method is to get it deep in there, deep into the, the little foam that's in there so that it soaks in from the center and then dissipates outward. But what I've also learned, uh, like for instance now, which I do have a syringe handy uh, right here. This is a marker refill syringe for Copic markers. 
So you can use something like that, but uh, here, I'll give you a, it's designed for the Copic refill, so this is not going to be the best for this, but it does work still. So a syringe like that, or one of those, um, like an eyedropper, or one of those droppers for babies, you know, when you give the medication to babies, that kind of thing. But sometimes what I like to do is I like to use a dry marker to facilitate blending. So like this. Now this marker is also on the fritz, so. I live in an extremely dry climate, so this tends to happen frequently. But you'll see. It looks it doesn't look like much now, but just give it a second, give it a second, give it a second. I've done this before. <laughs> I've I've been I've been on this pony before. Now, it does help, of course, to have a decent grasp on color theory if you're going to attempt something like this. Otherwise, it's going to look very muddy, and you are going to be a sad, sad goblin. So get a, get a grip on color theory and blending colors. If you are a painter, then you already know these things. But uh, for those of you who are not, because, of course, mixing a a blue with a orange is going to result in mud, which you don't want. Likewise, a purple with a yellow is going to result in mud. But do you see the effect that it's giving me? It's like a funky, mottled, uh, almost acid wash kind of a look in a, in a way. So we've got some texture going on here. And again, if you've never done this before, if you do not have a grasp on color theory, you're gonna end up with a mess. So just enter prepared <laughs> and know that you might screw up. But if you do have a good grasp on color theory, this is gonna this is gonna be fun to experiment with if you've never done something like this. Am I going to juice up this marker? Um yeah, yeah, I might, but for now I'm going to take advantage of the fact that it's dry and still giving me some pigment so that I can achieve this modeled effect. I don't know, it does look like acid wash to me. It may not translate that way on camera, but in person it certainly does look a bit acid washy. So I'm just gonna call it an acid wash effect. It's modeled, it's acid wash. Something like that. It's very cool though, right? I'm hoping that it will translate on camera well because I'm not sure that I've done this on camera before in any color and chat you know every time I do a color and chat I tell you guys oh there's nothing new in this video it's just gonna be same old same old and that has been the routine for quite a while and yet today I'm actually showing you something that I have not done on camera at least not that I can recall that I've done on camera so I may have to uh title this video something that will get people to watch it who otherwise wouldn't because they might miss something fun today. Not that all of my color and chats aren't fun, right? They're always a little bit entertaining. I mean, hello, it's your girl. And now that I'm working on this, should we take it one step further and um, should I try to acid wash all of it just to give you guys, I mean that was pretty much of a, that was a good demo, right? But you know what? Yeah, I think, see this just took a turn, this took a turn. This was like, oh, we're going to do a quick page and it's still going to be a quick page. However, now I am wanting to focus on these cheap markers and hope that I find more dead ones so that I can show you a bit more of this technique. Great, and of course now the, the remainder of them are going to be all juicy, right?
Oh, of course they are. Okay. Of course. Of course. Story of my life when I want to get something done. No, of course. Now they're all fabulous and juicy, so. Uh, okay, so I suppose that's not going to happen. <laughs> womp, womp. I you can't say I didn't try, but at least what I will do is I will blend the colors a little bit. So I will show you how to blend the markers on this paper because I've said it before. I can't remember when, but I know I've said it in multiple videos that people enjoy nitpicking things without doing any research. Like, I hate that. That's like my, one of my biggest pet peeves with people is that they will poo-poo something. It's like, uh, I'll give you an example. This is why I don't like Yelp, okay? Like Yelp and Google reviews because they're bullshit, right? People will leave complaints on restaurants because, oh, the waiter or the waitress was bad, the service was bad, or my food was mm, not cooked the way this restaurant cooks it. It's like, you know what? Those are nitpicky things. If you like the way a particular restaurant cooks their food, then eat there. Don't venture outside of that bubble. Uh, don't blame the waitresses, the wait staff, the waiters, the wh whoever. Don't blame them for your experience because it's up to you to make your day a good day. If the meal is good and your waitress is shitty, first of all, you don't know what's wrong with this waitress. Maybe she had a shit day. You don't know what's going on in her life because if she's still employed there, there's a reason why. It's probably because she's had a string of good days and then she just had a bad one, okay? If you like the food, don't shit on someone else and you don't know their situation. Now, my books. My books are designed to be adult coloring books that resemble children's coloring books. What do I mean by that? I'm referring to children's coloring books from the 90s. Now, the one difference that my books have is that my books are not on uh, newsprint. Children's coloring books from the 90s were on more of a tan paper, and I don't have access to that paper. So when I started making coloring books, because of the style and everything, I thought, what could I do? What could I do to make an adult coloring book that screamed children's book? And I, I looked around and I thought, okay, I could have my books professionally printed, which first of all, I can't afford, so I wanted to with really thick cardstock and all that. And I thought, you know what, that, means, that might be fun. A nice coloring book that looks childish but on nicer paper. And the more I thought about it, I talked myself out of it because I said, wait, not only is that expensive, but that negates the style of my books because the style of my books is quite juvenile in the design. It's very simple. And so then I landed on the publisher that I use and selling on Amazon. And they have only this type of paper stock, which is just a standard white, like bright white paper. Um, it's it's one step up from printer paper and that it has a little bit of tooth, but it's not thick. It is not thick paper. It's not, you know, adequate for paint. I say that, but you can paint on it and all of that. Now I say all of this because people will say, oh my God, I love the book, but Carla should get better paper. I love Carla, but she should get better paper. And it's like, okay, well, unless you're going to hand me the $10,000 that it takes for me to produce a couple hundred books, uh, no thank you. Leave your criticisms at home and also understand that I'm trying to encourage people to freaking play and have fun because by their very nature, when you have a book that's on expensive paper, really thick watercolor paper, you are going to feel guilty if you destroy that paper. It's the way people are with their sketchbooks. They purchase a hardbound sketchbook, and don't argue with me on this one because it's true and you know it, it's fact. There are people out there who purchase their beautiful, expensive, hardbound sketchbooks, and because they are bound, the hardbound, beautiful tome, they're afraid to even touch the damn thing. They're afraid to put an ugly sketch in their sketchbook. And I know that feeling. I know that feeling of, of feeling inadequate in your own sketchbook because when I first started illustrating, that was me. And I don't want to feel that way in coloring books. No, I do not. And I certainly don't want the people who are purchasing my books to feel that way. You see what I'm saying? So that's why 
I have stuck with this. I've stuck with it for two reasons because I have wanted, I'm not going to lie and say that I have not wanted to experiment with releasing books on different paper, but the problem is it's just the expense, you guys. I have to beat it into everyone's brain that you see me out here living a full-time artist life, but I also have full-time adult issues and adult bills and things. Like, I don't, I'm not made of money. Everything I do, I do with zero help, zero help from anyone. I pay all my bills, I buy all my art supplies, all of that. It's all me. It's all me. Likewise, people, I have a Patreon. And I've seen criticisms, not on me, not about me, but about larger creators who have Patreons or Patreon accounts. And people think, oh my God, this artist, like they're so lazy. They're getting so much off their Patreon, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, actually, I don't, I only have like 60 patrons, 60 to 65, I think. So I, it's not me that they're talking about. But there are other artists who have hundreds of patrons. But at the end of the day, they're, okay, Patreon takes a cut and then you have to pay your taxes. So you get a huge cut taken out of that. But like with anything, I sell coloring books and I get royalties from my books, but I still have to pay the tax man. I still have to pay the publisher, right? People forget those very key elements. And that's the thing about being a full-time creative is that that's something that a lot of people don't think about is all of the extra expenses that come along with doing this. It's very difficult. Do it if you are absolutely passionate about art, but just know what you're getting into, that it's very expensive, and uh, it can be soul-crushing at times, the financial strains of being a full-time artist. But I'll tell you, if, if it's what you want to do, if it's what you love, it's, it is worth it. It is worth it. If I sound as though I'm hesitating saying that right now, it's just because I know that the the economic climate is uh, not very pleasant at the moment. So I get it, it's hard. It's very hard. But I'm never going to be one to discourage someone from following their dream. You just have to be and this might be a, a dirty word, but you have to be a little realistic about it. And what I mean by that is, if you are a shitty illustrator, like shitty illustrator with zero discipline and no plans to improve, well, then you have to know that, yes, I'm going to have to work hard to improve my skills in order to get anywhere. So keep your expectations in check. If you want to do something, you can, but you just have to put in the work. This is one reason why I absolutely refuse to divulge details of my suppliers and my printers and all of that to people who ask me because I've had people who ask me, they will come to my Instagram, they will slide into my DMs and they will say, hey, I love your work, but... I have no clue where to get books printed. Where do you get your books printed? Where do you buy this? Where do you buy that? Like, where do you get your printers or your stickers printed and all that? And I think that is absolutely the most offensive thing that you can do to someone who is a full-time artist. Why do I say that? Some of you might be thinking, oh, you're gatekeeping, you're gatekeeping. No, it's that the people who ask these questions nine times out of 10, hell, 20 times out of 10, have never so much as commented, have never so much as purchased a sticker, have never so much as supported me in any way whatsoever, but they want me to divulge all of the details and all of the, 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 the details, the ideas, the everything, so that they, that I've worked so many years for. I have worked so hard for so many years learning how to draw, learning about printers, spending the money, wasting the money on suppliers. So much blood, sweat, and tears have gone into the artist that I am today. And I'm not done evolving. I'm certainly not done learning, evolving, growing, doing all of that. 
And it's insulting that somebody thinks that they can simply traipse into my life and say, hey, love you, girl. Where do you get your shit printed? I'm like, you know what? That's so rude and so disrespectful. So disrespectful. If you want to do something, you've got to do the work. You've got to do the work. And it's the laziness of it all, too. There's a, a whole wide world of internet out there with answers. Google it, learn, do the work. Don't be lazy. I told you I'm not interested in excuses at all. I'm happy to give pointers. I mean, hell, look, I'm teaching you guys my techniques or at least demonstrating them to you. That's different. Right? This is technique, this is art, this, this is creativity. There, there are differences. I'm more than willing to help, but I'm not willing to hold people's hands. When they say, oh, we want to follow in your footsteps, how do you do this? This is like, well, you can't, you're not going to learn anything if you don't do the work. What is that saying? We're, we're going to get Carla philosophical here. The, what, oh, it, uh, the fish, it's coming to me, it's coming to me. If you give a man, a fish he will eat for a day but if you teach a man to fish he will eat for a lifetime it's that sort of thing I'm not gonna hand you my fish bitch <laughs> okay well, let's keep it moving and let's see I like this weird color combination the hot orange the mustard the lime green it's a little weird right but we're digging on it I am digging on it anyway her skin, I had wanted to do her skin a hot neon pink. I know, I know it sounds atrocious, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, am I gonna regret it? Because I think we're gonna do it. But for that, I don't have a hot neon pink at my disposal. However, I have these, um, these pastel ohuhus, and I've talked about this previously, that these pastel ohuhus, some of the colors tend to dry brighter than when you lay them down, which negates the idea of them being considered a pastel, correct? Because they dry bright, which is so bizarre to me. I mean, I dig it, I do, it's just odd. All right, I'm going to uh, poke around in this ohuhu bag and see what I can come up with. And if I find a pink that is adequate, then great. If I don't, then c'est la vie. We shall move on, but uh, I will do that off camera. I think we have found the one. See, it's called a light pink, but you'll see what's going to happen. Uh, these are beautiful markers. These are the ohuhu pastel. These I will have linked. You know what, as a matter of fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to link both the Ohuhu pastels because this, this particular marker comes in the pastel set, but I will also link in lieu of these piece of garbage Ohuhus, I will link the Ohuhus down there instead. But just keep in mind that if you have cheap alcohol markers lying around your house and you want to try this technique, then use the cheap ones. Or if you have some money to spare and you want to buy some cheap markers, then by uh, the Cali Arts would probably be my recommendation for a cheap alcohol marker that's gonna dry out that you can try this with. Or if you're feeling rebellious, <laughs> open one of your good markers, like a Prismacolor marker and just let it dry. Just, like literally let it dry for a couple hours. Just let it dry, <laughs> just let it dry out and use it that way and then just rejuice it. Because again, you won't necessarily be killing the marker if you do that. It's just the alcohol that's drying, not the pigment. So you're good, baby, you're good. Ooh, we love a neon boob action, yeah? I like this color. This is exactly what I was hoping for, but I was wanting to fill in all of the flesh are we gonna mix it with another color? You guys, she's gotten a little weird today. Let's see, <laughs> today. Somebody out there said today, just today, bitch. 
like you're always a little off. What are you talking about? No, I guess I was going to say that oh, this looks a little bit more natural than I was hoping, but I suppose it doesn't because this is a salmon color and <laughs> I've never seen a salmon colored human being. So I like this. So we'll fill her in with this weird salmon color. Yeah, that's odd. I like, ooh, you know what we should do? We are going to go full on Rococo. Although technically I think this is a uh, medieval thing that the Rococo sass monsters borrowed the the facial makeup leaving the facial makeup plain. I did that in here actually. I think I baked into one at least one possibly two pages. Yep, right here. She has the outline of the makeup already, like the little white plastered face where they would kind of leave their makeup like a little circle or a heart shape and they would fill it in with the, the white. Is it the only one that I did it on? Let's see. She might be. And I think that might be the only one. I know that I did it in Fashion Circus, but that's because they were clowns, so that's a little bit more expected. And in this one, no, I think I only baked it into the one, yeah. Okay, well, should we do that and give her like an obvious, ooh, she's saying like in this video a lot today. I do that every once in a while, every 10 videos or so. Oh, maybe not, maybe not, maybe I don't want to do that. Unless we give her some kind of funky shape. A try, let's see. Ooh, I think that would look fun if we did a triangle. Oop, 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 oop. Let's see. Triangle being, of course, my favorite shape. Pointy, you know, I love stars and triangles. is going to look so just not comfortable you'll what I mean by that is it's gonna throw people off when they see this it's one of those Carla isms that people either love or hate because I do things unconventionally in my books but you all know that if you've been here for a while hi hello welcome this is why you love me. And for those of you who are new, hi, hello, welcome. <laughs> this is this is the um, the unconventional coloring freak show that is my channel. Somebody out there is screaming, Carla, she was so pretty. What did you do? She's so pretty. Shut up. She just wants weird makeup. Leave her alone. Or him at this point, because we've gone full on drag queen territory here. So whatever it is, whatever it is, wants to have some fun with the makeup, okay? So now my question is, do we color the skin on the outside a different color? Or we just, no, we'll do we'll do the same we will do uh, the pink as we did on the chest we'll turn it into a salmon color and it will just be a white cutout of makeup
She's looking clownish. But that was the whole point of the Rococo style. It was to look ostentatious and over the top and ridiculous. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Ostentatious, ridiculous, over the top. As the one Miss Goddess, Dolly Parton, said, takes a lot of money to look this cheap. It's true. I would know. <laughs> Although, to be fair, I'm tacky and fabulous. Tacky fabulous, but I don't have the money to spend hundreds of thousands to look tacky and fabulous. I learned my tricks over the years. I love this. And let's see. Fill in these little baubles up here. And for her eyes, should we do purple eyes or green eyes? I think green eyes would look killer on this, but purple would stand out just a touch more, I think. So, let's do purple. Like I need another shade of purple. Mm. Let's see. Pretty. And then we will put some. Pink on there. I love how these Ohuhus just feel in the hand. The round barrel, the smooth, glossy white. It's just, it's good. It's good stuff. And for the lips, I should have gone with green eyes. Shoulda. Woulda, shoulda, coulda. It's okay. I think we're going to go with a glossy black lip. Okay. She's going to stay the way that she is for now. Just going to add a little bit of depth to the flowers. Not too much, not too crazy. I'm gonna keep it fairly simple as we did with the last one. Now my question is, what are we going to do with the outline on this one? What did we do? Did we add a thicker black outline to it? We did not. We went in with a lighter color. I wanna go with a green. We are going to go with this lime green. Add a bit more to the eyeshadow. And then we're going to do essentially the same thing I did on the other page. Just give her a funky outline. Like so. Let's see, what did I, I know I put, I did a dual the last time, but we won't do that today. Just go basic. You know what, I should use the round, the brush tip. Yeah, that's much easier. Ooh, she is looking amazing. She might look absolutely hideous to some of you out there, but I think this is cool. This is just a weird, funky color palette. This is so... 1980s New Wave Rococo. This is exactly the feeling that I wanted in my book. This one and then the, the previous page, the first color and chat that I did in this book, those captured the essence of the theme of this book. Not everyone might understand the theme of this book, even though I try to explain it, I get it. It's my brain, not, every, not everyone is in my brain, so they're not gonna understand my vision completely. 
but these colors, these treatments of Rococo inspired elements, this is exactly the kind of feel that I wanted. It was um, a disco, if I was throwing a Rococo themed party right at the juncture of 80s new wave and when disco ended and 80s new wave took over, this is the kind of themed party, this is the kind of club kids, party people that I would like to be hosting my show, showing up at the party, you know, that kind of thing. Of course, with a ton of glitter. Let's not forget the glitter. Okay, so now I am going to grab what's my favorite, say it with me, my favorite pen of life, the black glaze pen. We're going to grab her because this is screaming for some glossy elements. And we're, we are not going to go overkill. I am simply going to give her eye makeup a gloss black because that cat eye has got to be sharp and it's got to be glossy. True story, I used to wear an eyeliner that would dry glossy black. They discontinued it to this day. I don't even remember. which brand that it was. It was a dip eyeliner that had the felt tip, but it's been so long that I can't remember the brand of it. And they discontinued it because black glossy eyeliner is not popular. Why, I don't know, because I think it looked absolutely killer. Every time I would move my head around, my eyeliner would just like a laser, shiny, it was great. And then it was discontinued. And it was an inexpensive one too a drugstore brand and I can't for the life of me remember what the brand was but to this day I mourn that eyeliner and I've not been able to find a glossy liquid eyeliner again so what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna do a glossy black the little boob decoration and we'll give her a, at least one black cheek dot and the lips. Ooh, yes, glossy black lips. <laughs> Decadent, darling, I'm too fabulous. My lipstick, my glossy black lacquered lips are too fabulous to eat. I'm not going to kiss, you know, I'm not going to eat all night because I don't want to ruin my fabulous black lipstick. fill it all in. Well, we'll leave a, a couple sections of uh, gloss. I'll add some. I will add some gloss later, but there you go. Cute. You know what? Let's just go ahead and do this one as well. Ooh, and her little... We'll paint in her thin eyebrows. little bit of a little touch of gloss on those eyebrows she already looks artificial everything about her is artificial so let's go ahead and uh, make a little bit more glossy just like me <laughs> I call myself the polyester princess because I wear a ton of polyester a ton of polyester a ton of rhinestones some of my rhinestones are glass some are acrylic but nevertheless a lot of polyester clothing um, acrylic nails. I mean, we do it all. Polyester princess. I'm artificial. I love it. I'm very much of the, as long as the inside, the internals are genuine and raw, I like to make the externals as glittery polyester fabulous as possible. And that is one of the goals of my new brand is to teach people or at least encourage people to have fun in their fashion and not take it too seriously. I will not be carrying clothing that is business casual. <laughs> to start with, the clothing that I sell is going to be a little bit more on the tame side, easy to dress up, easy to dress down, easy to make as tacky as you want, but also grocery store appropriate, at least some of the garments. But we'll talk about that later. 
we're ready for highlights. We are ready for highlights. I'm going to clean up the chaos that is my desk because what you don't see, well, you see some of it, but this is everything that is uh, on my table at the moment. So let me handle this and then we'll grab the gel pens. Okay, we are back with some gel pens. Today is just proving to be an exercise in Carla's greatest hits because we're getting my favorite color combos, the warm purples and pinks with a smattering of green. We've got the glaze pen, we've got the gold glitter, which we will be adding, and they have everything. It's a favorite. So I am going to outline, highlight, excuse that pause. The dogs were being very quiet. I'm dog sitting today. And uh, you, you know how it is, dogs, and from what I understand, children as well, when they're quiet, you know something's going on, so I had to check on them, but they're fine. They're, they're taking a little nappy nap, so they're good. For once, they're not being absolute terrors. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, they're good. They're, they're good puppies. Um, am I gonna wanna do, I think we're gonna go orange. Oh, yellow, no, we're going to do orange and yellow up in the hair, I think. Yeah. So these are, of course, the Jelly Roll Moonlights. which you know I love. The ones that make my life a living hell because when I use them on illustrations and I attempt to make art prints, I have to go in in post-production and correct everything because we all know neon colors do not scan. But I enjoy torturing myself in the name of art, you know. One of those annoying artist things. We have to be stubborn. Do what we want. The whole I do what I want mentality. I'm liking this. I mean, of course, just this entire thing right here. It would make such an amazing sticker Ugh, in these colors. I've already designed a sticker, which you may have seen in a previous vlog or on my Instagram stories. I've not ordered the stickers yet, but I have designed stickers based on a few of the pages in Rococo Agogo, and this was one of them. The sticker was designed in funky, fabulous colors, absolutely, but not these, because I designed the sticker weeks ago. But um, I've not ordered them yet. Again, I'm on a super tight budget at the moment. Just, ugh, life, I swear. Um, but they will be available <laughs> eventually. But I like this. This would make fun colors as well. Okay, so I have a feeling that this video, at least it feels as though we've been flying by. So I'm going to do a teeny bit of work highlighting the hair so that you get an idea of how I'm going to proceed with the highlights in the, we'll, we'll be Rococo appropriate in the coiffure. That, no, that's a horrible way to say it. The, the coiffure, coiffure, coiffure. I'm not going to attempt a French accent because y'all know I can't do it. But just coiffure sounds hideous. Coiffure. Coiffure sounds as though I'm attempting to make it sound a little bit decent. I'm still failing. We'll just call it a coif, okay? Highlighting the coif. That's her big fabulous hair, of course. So I'm going to show you the highlights that I'm going to put into her coif. 
and then I am going to complete that part off camera. And we are going to do something so annoying with the hair. Check this out. We're going to highlight in neon yellow. <gasps> Sacre bleu. See? That was my terrible French. Okay. So this is what's going to happen. And this, the idea behind this is to have it be a play on the neon yellow green outline. See that? And I think I need this in a slightly larger tip. Do I have it? Do I have it is the question. Because story of my life, I need it, so why would I have it, you know? Wouldn't you know? Wouldn't you know? She ain't got it. <laughs> so I do not have it. Uh, oh, wait. She does. Oh, but is it dead? Oh, my God, no! No. Okay. Crisis averted. Crisis averted? I'm not sure because I'm not sure I'm feeling this as much as I thought I was going to. But uh, let's, let's let's try a little something here. Let's try a little something here. Ooh. Oh, that's fun. Okay, so we're going to do a dual highlight treatment. I'm going to go in with both colors. I'm going to do yellow as well as the neon red. Which is, as you know, the neon red. It used to be called neon vermilion. I haven't checked lately if it's still the same. But... It, I will forever call it Neon Vermilion, probably. And I'm going to do the duels in the hair. Okay, so it is going to cover a bit of the modeling, I know. You don't have to do as I do, you can simply watch, but I think it looks cool. So we're gonna do that and then I will catch up with you a little later. We are back and we are going to finish up this little lady. Just refilled my water, nice and ice cold. Oh God, it's so good. It's a process taking the dogs. Oh, I also have ice cream. We're not being cute today and putting it in one of my cute bowls. It's just in a mug. <laughs> um, vanilla, of course, because basic bitch, we've been through this. I love a good classic vanilla. It's a process <laughs> taking the dogs. This is why I have ice cream and water because it is about 111 today. And I took the dogs out for poopies and peepees, but it is a process after 9 a.m. Because what I have to do, because of course me, I go outside with my big old umbrella and I don't allow the dogs to step on the asphalt or on the concrete, on the sidewalk, of course, because it's hot and I don't want them to burn their little feet. And so what I do, it's, it's, it's a process. I take one of them out for poopies and peepees then I bring him in. I take Bentley first because he's the baby, of course. He's the younger of the two. He's the smaller of the two. He goes first. So I take Bentley out for poopies and peepees. Take my umbrella. I carry him outside. And we go and we do the thing. And then we come in. And I'm hot <laughs> because I've been outside with the dog. And then I have to get the other one, who's bigger. She's not much heavier, but she's bigger. And I have to carry her across the street, wait for her to do her business, carry her back. <laughs> and then by then, it's like, you know, I'm a little hot. I need some water and some ice cream. 
So that's what we're doing, but we're also gonna finish up this little lady. Ah, I'm cooling down now, the ice cream helps. It's kind of amazing how eating just a few teaspoon or tablespoonfuls of ice cream will cool you down internally very quickly. It doesn't last, but I mean, the psychological effects are great. So yeah, not much to say other than we're gonna finish this because I think we are right around the 45 minute mark. I think, I've been keeping just a general eye on the clock today. So I think we're gonna just, if I don't finish it on camera, I will finish it off camera. But for the most part, she's done. I mean, I'm not going to add anything crazy to it. What I will do on camera, okay, the last thing, <laughs> Blame the heat for my discombobulated brain. No, I'm kidding. It's not that bad. I say it's not that bad because I don't have to be out in it for very long. So it's okay. Uh, but what I'm going to do is outline with gold, similar to what I did on the other page, the other color in chat, which it's up on the channel if you would like to watch that color in chat. It's the first color in chat for Rococo Agogo. Another quick one, another not exactly the same style but in a similar style take a peek at that if you like this technique and you have not or if you like the style or these techniques and you have not watched that one i recommend it if you are someone who is struggling to let loose in your coloring books i would highly encourage you to just take a gander at my color and chat videos because i do have several that are more on the minimalist side in terms of color palettes and coloring. The only one that I can think of off the top of my head right now is the Rococo Ogogo because that one is still fresh in my mind. So at the very least, watch that one and try something similar. If you feel as though you want to color but you don't want to commit to something out of control, just give something like this a shot because even though it is minimal we only used a few colors it looks a little bit involved right because we have several effects going on now we put the gold on it and it's just it's cute though it's simple it's cute i did not add anything to the background i have been debating whether or not i want to release a book that has some backgrounds in it i have tossed in a few backgrounds in previous books uh, the one off the top of my head that I can think of that I included some small backgrounds, nothing too involved, is Belle Pipistrelle. I definitely put some in there. The one that has a ton of backgrounds, I mean, essentially the entire book is full of fully rendered pages, that would be Eerie Patisserie. So I'm debating. I'm debating. She might do it. I'm kind of in the mood for it to release something similar to Eerie Patisserie. Not the theme, but at least with the fully rendered background. So... I think that's going to be coming eventually. I don't want to say soon because I'm not entirely sure when, but it is definitely on my mind. I have a couple of themes. I thought that I had my entire year already planned in terms of coloring book themes, but I'm waffling on a couple of them. I think I want to flip-flop a couple of books because I'm getting... I'm getting the itch to work on coloring books again. Not that the itch ever left, but there was a time when creating books was my primary focus, and now that my focus has to be on starting a new brand and my other side hustles and such, I haven't been able to dedicate enough time to, or as much time as I usually do, to brainstorming themes for coloring books. So although I do have a list, of books that I would like to produce for the rest of the year. There's there's just something nagging at me that I want to produce something that has backgrounds in it. So I think we're going to possibly do that. I can't exactly give you a number on when because this year we have already fallen just slightly behind. Well, no, not really because I like to release three to four books each year, which translates to about, what is that, one per season just about. Not to say that they are seasonal themed, but one book every three to four months is basically the schedule that I have set for myself. And so far, we're on track, we're on track. We released Rococo Agogo back in March, and then the new book is going to be released in July. So after that, I have not started working on 
the next release. I've fallen behind because usually by now, when the new book is being ready to be released, I already have the next one at least in progress. I have a few pages done and it's good and mm, we're not there. We have not done that. So I, I need to get on that. I need to get on that. And that will be my project for July. Is getting the theme going and knocking out a few pages. Yeah. Cool. See, even though you guys are not here, it still helps me talking to myself slash talking to you guys and hearing myself think. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Now that being said, an extra big fat thank you goes out to my Patreon patrons. You guys are going to have another coloring page coming to you. You've already seen the cover for the next coloring book by the time this is out, so you already know the theme. But I also have more coloring pages coming to you for the summer. Typically I release one coloring page per month for my Patreon patrons. Every once in a while I release two. During spooky season, I do at least two, often more than that. But summer is turning into spooky season 2.0, or rather the precursor precursor to spooky season, because I love summertime. I love the bright, obnoxious colors. I love the, you know, I live in Palm Springs, damn it. <laughs> I love the permanent vacation lifestyle. So, my, my life is not a permanent vacation. Let's not get that twisted, please. Your girl busts her hump all day long. But you know what I'm saying. It's the, the, for lack of a better phrase, the summer vibe. We love that. Not the beach, not the swimming pool exposed to the sun. I do love the beach if I'm in a cabana staring at the water, okay? It's, if it's a moonlit walk on the beach, because y'all know I can't be exposed to the sun. She doesn't like it. The girl does not like it. Sun burned, sand in my crevices, creatures in the water that I cannot see unless somebody wants to send me to the Bahamas with the crystal clear waters and therefore I can wear my giant sun hat walk around with my umbrella and dip my toesies in a lagoon that's covered by palm trees okay I'm all about that life but uh that said I'm learning to appreciate my summer wardrobe. It took me several years to start seeing summer as not being a burden. Because you know, polyester princess. Your girl wears a lot of polyester, a lot of synthetics, sequins, all of it. That is not summer clothing. Summer nights, perhaps, but not during the day, absolutely not. But in recent years, I have adopted a wardrobe. When, by in recent years, I mean last summer and this summer. <laughs> so quite recently, I have become obsessed with biker shorts. Just plain black biker shorts. And I can style those with a plethora of tops and adorable platforms. And it is just my summer go-to. I live in my biker shorts. Okay. I think we're gonna take this off camera now. I think I'm gonna go ahead and finish her up as she adds more lines. But you know, this is what I tend to do. But I'm going to stop talking now. I'm going to finish it off camera insert the final shots in the video. So I'm going to take this time to make my leave of all of you lovely heathens. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. For everyone who has been trying to run a stake through my heart for taking so long to film and upload Rococo a go go color and chats. I hope that you enjoyed the first one and this one as well. They've been a pleasure to color. Easy, painless, adorable, cute. Love it. Here for it. 
So I hope that you enjoyed it. That said, links to the coloring books will be, or to the coloring book, I should say, will be down below. The book is available as a bound version, exactly the one that I'm coloring in now. That is available in the land of Amazonia, and then I sell the PDF version in my Etsy shop. If you prefer a printable that you can print on your own paper, baby, that's in the Etsy shop. Otherwise, printable version, or rather bound and printed, printed and bound version on Amazon. Everything you need to know will be down below. Links to my shop, to my website, all of that good stuff down below. As always, just recommend, I just recommend that you bookmark my website because all of my socials, links to my Patreon, to my Redbubble, to my Etsy, and everything else is going to be on my website always. That being said, I'm gonna take off now. Thank you, thank you. Be bad, be good. I do not give a damn which. Just come back in one piece. No boo-boos like this. This is not a serious boo-boo. It's just a burn. <laughs> My attempting to cook. But, uh, yeah. I hope you enjoy. I hope you enjoy the final shots of this piece. And thank you to my patrons. Love you, babies. And I will see you in the next one. Perfect, perfect.